As we entered into 2020, a uh, German manufacturer, Fon, just based outside of Stuttgart in the town of Nürtingen, were looking forward to moving into their new purpose-built facility. A 6,300 square meter purpose-built factory on the edge of the town, which was gonna consolidate seven buildings in one. But unfortunately, with 2020 being the way it's gone around, we've not been able to see them in their new habitat. So we've done the next best thing. Joining me today, Jochen and the gang from Fon, Hello, how are you doing? Hello, Richard. Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to the Phones Bar. Let me introduce ourselves quickly. On my left, we have Jochen Schwarz, our CEO. On my right, my colleague Samuel Hartmann and me, Chris Bollinger. We work for the sales team at Phone. Good to see you. I remember coming to your facility about several years ago, and I was amazed to see the headquarters with the sound lab in one location. and. There were several other manufacturing locations in Nürtingen that you were putting the, doing the assembly, putting the speakers together. At what point did you decide to consolidate under one roof? At what point did you think, this is going to be a big investment, but we need to, this is the only way ahead? So the whole company was spread over seven different buildings, so R&D and manufacturing and everything was divided and now finally we are united under one roof. But how we got there and how challenging this way was, I think Jochen is the right one to ask because he can tell most of the details. Oh yeah, that's why. Oh yeah, that was kind of a nightmare. We have expanded and added more and more buildings. 2014, a huge building in the neighborhood was available and for the first time we were thinking about uniting all departments under one roof. R&D, manufacturing, logistics and sales. So for the first time we planned for such a scenario. We saw many advantages. We have presented the idea to our supervisory board, but they said the old building would not suit us. They'd prefer a new building, which represents our brand values, such as digital technologies and innovation. So we decided to plan the phone experience world. The good thing about Stuttgart, you have great suppliers. You've got the automotive industry and some high-end manufacturers who obviously supply you. The bad thing about Stuttgart is it's quite a growing city, so you were delayed in moving into your new facility because you couldn't find a construction company. They're all working everywhere else because Stuttgart's a booming town. Was that a frustration? For us, it was never a question if we stay here in this region. So we're pretty homebound and are real Swabians. So um, we're very happy that we have this high quality supply chain here directly in front of our door. So um, yeah, but the other thing that you said that it might have been hard to find a company, a contractor, to build this new facility here. I guess you're pretty right, but again, I think Jochen will give us the right impression on how that involved. We faced two challenges. The first one was to find a building ground. Here we were supported by the mayor of Nürtingen and got a ground in the newly developed industrial area. The second one was to find a construction company that was able to start soon. We contacted approximately 30 companies and got only one offer. How long did the construction and the planning, more importantly, take? 2014, we started planning. All departments were invited to collect their ideas, needs and plans. All in all, it took us six years. We've been restricted in coming. Oh, we can't come and I know your customers can't come. Has this been a, a frustration on your part? I must say, um, it was frustrating in the beginning and uh, for me personally it was a big change since I was traveling a lot over the last year. So I spent days and days and, and weeks in airplanes and had the opportunity to meet people face to face talking to them. So that changed, but on the other hand I found out that it's also possible having a video chat as we do now and still keep the conversation going on and doing trainings online and stuff like that. So things have changed and some of these changes are very positive for me and I learned a lot from that. And I'm sure Samuel, who's also in charge for, for international sales, um, will have experienced the same things 
during absolutely, the last absolutely, Chris. So we had uh, at the end, I would say, a lot of new opportunities. So there we have, for example, our new software, Phone Designer, which is also the tool for collaboration in project design. So it's a simulation tool, and this offers new chances. And imagine before that time, you had the, a camera at your PC, for example, and now this opens up the way of communication and um, this we can see on absolutely different levels. So the levels of working with the software, but also on the levels of communication through Teams and so on. It's great that we can do so many things remotely now. I think we had the components before COVID. I think we've put them together and assembled these components in a much more meaningful way. I think after the, we've got the all clear and we can travel, we don't need to travel like we did before. Yes, absolutely. And this matches exactly also with our product strategy. So we have now the products like Scale Speakers, like Scale Bar, all these products which fit to screens and these video conferencing solutions. So perfect match for the right time. Some of your premium projects, say in Asia Pacific, where before you'd have sent an engineer or high class technician to say Philippines or Singapore to commission a project, you cannot do that now. Has that been a, a problem for you this year or have you been able to commission remotely? For sure, this is a challenge. But still, I think we are well prepared. So we have our international team acting worldwide. So for example, we are located in Middle East. We have a guy in India, also in Asia and China. We have also a European team consisting of a guy in Denmark, so Netherlands, in France and so on. So I think we are there well prepared and we can make sure that the uh, projects are commissioned in the right way. Now, you're blessed with this facility called Sound Lab. How hard was it to replicate what you had before? Yeah, the new Sound Lab is, so to say, an improved version of the old one. So it's a Sound Lab Mark II and it's embedded in the entire building. So it literally became the heart of the phone experience world. And yeah, we moved forward. We changed the room acoustics. With the help of Müller BBM, we improved the room acoustics for presentation and demonstrating our products. And it's fully digital now, so the complete techniques built in there are remote controllable via digital network. You have to customize. I mean, I mean you're so good at now at customizing not just the paintwork, but the networking, the size. It's, 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 it's a complete compromise to build a loudspeaker to make it fit a room. Because obviously the audio quality has to be spot on in terms of intelligibility and what it does for the client. But you're also catering for the interior designer more and more these days. Of course, customization is an essential part of our company and also a kind of a core, so we are able to adapt the systems. But I think even the more important point is that we have the right technology. So for us, aesthetics is not a contradiction to perfect sound. This means if we talk, for example, about beam steering technology, we have the tools to shift the mechanical curving, which you know from a line array, for example, or a line source speaker, passive one, which you put uh, with a certain inclination to the wall. We shift this to the digital domain. And by doing this, we can ensure the aesthetics so that it looks perfect. And at the same time, you get perfect coverage, perfect sound. And not less is our demand for the phone systems. Customer feedback obviously shapes your catalogue and where you go in future. How important is it to get that customer feedback? Sure, customer's feedback is essential, important for us. And I think we've gained there also over the last years a lot of experience. So we improved our process, involving them even more into it. So in these days, we are listening absolutely careful to their feedback and have a close relationship with our customers in improving our products permanently. Okay, well, thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Jochen. And obviously, Mr. Bollinger, danke sehr. Thank you, Richard. It was a pleasure to have you here and see you soon in Nottingen.